Number 10. Boeing B-17 Nicknamed the Flying Fortress, Boeing developed the massive Boeing B-17 heavy bomber during the 1930s for the United States Army Air Corps. It initially lost the competition for a military contract because the prototype crashed, but the design captured the Air Corps' attention enough for them to reconsider. Officials ordered several more for further evaluation, and the B-17 became the third most produced bomber of all time. During World War II, the U.S. Army Air Force used the Flying Fortress in their daytime strategic bombing campaigns, wreaking havoc on German industrial, civilian, and military targets. The B-17 proves to be extremely resilient, offering sustaining heavy damage, but still making it back to base. This, along with the fact that it dropped more bombs than any other plane throughout the war, earned the aircraft a reputation for its toughness. Throughout the war, the U.S. dropped about 1.5 million tons of bombs on its enemies. The B-17s dropped over 640,000 of those. The British Royal Air Force also used the plane during the war. The bombing techniques employed by the Americans and the British had a combined devastating effect on the Wehrmacht and on the Germans' morale, as the Flying Fortress played a big role in these campaigns. It was also a critical component in helping the Allies establish air superiority over the Axis powers. Germany's Heinkel He 177 Grief was their answer to the Allies' B-57, but the Germans' use of the plane was significantly delayed. It had a lot of problems with engine development, and they kept changing their minds on what they would use the aircraft for. Even when the Germans finally used the aircraft, the B-57 proved to be far superior. Number 9. Bigger and Better Tanks The first tanks the military ever built were used toward the end of World War I and in a very limited capacity. Tank technology advanced significantly between then and the onset of the Second World War. Manufacturers developed faster and more powerful vehicles, and they came with many other upgrades, including better weapons and improved track and suspension systems. Along with these advancements came an expanded role for tanks in combat. To keep up with the improving technology, many countries prioritized tank development, including the United States, Great Britain, Germany, the Soviet Union, and France, just to name a few. At the beginning of the war, the U.S. relied on its light and maneuverable but poorly armored M2 series tanks. In 1942, they replaced them with the much more popular and more successful M4 Sherman medium tank. The U.S. military produced around 50,000 M4 Shermans between 1942 and 1945, and they continued to be used long after the war ended. The M26 Pershing eventually replaced the M4 Sherman, which was the Army's first heavy tank. Its design differed significantly from its predecessor, and it boasts major improvements in firepower, protection, and mobility. The M26 Pershing made its debut toward the end of the war, and the military used it extensively in the Allied invasion of Germany and the Korean War. Number 8. MK2 Grenade Nicknamed the Pineapple Grenade, the handheld MK2 was the standard issue U.S. hand grenade during World War II. Soldiers knew it for being simple to use, and for its detonation method, the weapon exploded through a process known as fragmentation, meaning its casing broke into a thousand or more tiny pieces of shrapnel when it exploded. The effects were almost always lethal to anyone within a 30-foot radius of the blast, and anyone within 150 feet was likely to be wounded. Once they pulled the pen, a soldier had between 4 and 4.8 seconds to get the grenade to its target. Instinctively, it may seem like a good idea to throw the deadly weapon as soon as possible to reduce the chances of it exploding in your face, but doing that increased the chances of an enemy catching the grenade and throwing it back at you before it exploded. So the timing was everything. The military trained soldiers to count to two before tossing the grenade at their target. A slight miscalculation could have potentially fatal consequences or leave the grenade thrower injured or disfigured. While the MK2 grenade was a primary weapon used by U.S. forces during World War II, its use continued after the conflict. They used it in a limited capacity during the Korean War, but were quickly phased out as the military rolled out its new and improved replacement, known as the M26 series. The U.S. Marine Corps and Army continued to use the MK2 grenade throughout the 1950s and 60s. The Navy was the last military branch to retire it in 1969, when they officially withdrew it from the service. Number 7. Type 21 U-Boat Built by the Germans starting in 1944, the diesel-electric Type 22 U-Boat was the first submarine that operated primarily underwater. They didn't use it as a surface vessel that could go underwater for brief periods to evade enemy detection. The Germans equipped it with many more batteries than previous conventional subs. This new sub could submerge for several days at a time, 
The Type 21 could travel underwater for a long time while only going anywhere near the surface to recharge through a snorkel. It featured many other improvements from previous subs, including nicer crew accommodations and an improved hull design. This enabled it to travel faster underwater, but the Type 22 ultimately proved to be mechanically unreliable and vulnerable to damage in combat. It was because of its design, but also because inexperienced workers rushed the job. Altogether, the Germans built 118 of the U-boats, but only four built were ever combat ready, and just two were put to use during World War II. After the war ended, the Navy of many other countries purchased some of the subs. Many new submarine designs were at least partially based on the 21. Number 6. Proximity Fuse The ability to shoot down enemy aircraft came a long way during World War II thanks to the invention of the Proximity Fuse. Known today as the VT Fuse, crews attached the device to rockets or torpedoes and then used a radio signal to detect nearby planes. The signal then triggered the explosive to detonate. Before the military developed the proximity fuse, it often took 2,500 rounds to shoot down a plane. The device makes the process much easier and far less costly to blow an enemy aircraft out of the sky. Simply put, it eliminated the need to be exactly on target to blast an enemy jet into a million pieces. The weapon not only reduced waste, but drastically decreased the time and effort that were required to get the job done. American and British scientists collaborated to develop the weapon during the early stages of the war, but they didn't use it for the first time until the Battle of the Bulge in 1944, the year before the war ended. And they didn't use it for just shooting down aircraft. During the battle, the Allies used the proximity fuse to explode weapons between 20 and 50 feet above the enemy ground troops, showering them with deadly shrapnel. Which do you think would be more terrifying, being on the crew of a bomber or a battleship? Let us know in the comments, and remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Number 5. The Atomic Bomb The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers led the development of the world's first nuclear weapon, starting in 1942 with the Manhattan Project. Fears inspired it because the Allies thought the Germans were working to create similar technology. The military carried out research and testing at various sites throughout the United States and Canada, including in New Mexico, Tennessee, and Washington State. Scientists designed the atomic bomb based on the concept of nuclear fission, which is when an atom's nucleus splits in two, resulting in an enormous amount of energy. Theoretical physicist and top nuclear fission researcher J. Robert Oppenheimer took over as director of the Los Alamos Laboratory in New Mexico in 1943. This was the same year that the U.S. built the first Manhattan Project bombs and tested them at the site. Two years later, researchers successfully detonated a nuclear bomb for the first time in an operation codenamed the Trinity Test, marking the beginning of the atomic age. They developed two different bombs at Los Alamos. One was the uranium-based Little Boy, and the other the plutonium-based Fat Man. The Little Boy did not undergo any testing before the Americans dropped it on the Japanese city of Hiroshima on August 6, 1945, but the technology worked to a devastating effect killing at least 80,000 civilians. When three days went by without an official declaration of surrender from Japan, the U.S. dropped the Fat Man bomb over the city of Nagasaki, claiming tens of thousands more lives. But not all nuclear uses are destructive. The American government held a monopoly over the technology until 1964. It was then that President Lyndon B. Johnson began allowing private ownership of nuclear materials. Since then, nuclear fission has served as the basis for technological innovations in energy, medicine, and several other non-combat related industries. Number 4. Superior Small Arms During the Civil War, both the Union and Confederate militaries struggled to work efficiently with the dozens of different ammunition sizes that were being used in combat. After the war ended, the U.S. made it a priority to resolve this logistical nightmare and reduce its array of small arms to just three different calibers. Although this marked a vast improvement, the delivery of proper ammunition remained a problem well into World War II. This led to continued post-war efforts to standardize both American and Allied ammunition. One of the war's most popular weapons was the American-made M2 Browning 50 caliber machine gun. The military manufactured almost two million of these weapons for soldiers fighting on land, in the air, and on the sea. Besides being incredibly versatile, the M2 was extremely powerful with its ability to fire 550 rounds per minute at a range of over four miles. The war saw the development of the first semi-automatic and assault rifles, including the self-loading American M1 Garand rifle, 
nicknamed the Yankee Self-Loader, as well as the German FG-42 and the Sturmgewehr 44. After the war, the U.S. incorporated elements of the German machine gun technology into the M60 machine gun design. Number 3. V-2 Rocket During World War II, the work and skills of rocket scientist Werner von Braun caught the attention of the Nazis. They summoned him to help with the development of the world's first long-range guided ballistic missile, known as the V-2 Rocket. Starting in September 1944, the Nazis launched over 3,000 of them at Allied targets. There was no effective defense against the missiles, which flew at supersonic speed, struck with little to no warning, and were nearly unstoppable in their paths. V-2 rockets killed around 9,000 civilians and military personnel, as well as about 12,000 laborers and concentration camp prisoners who the Nazis forced to help make the weapons. Allied forces made it a priority to capture manufacturing facilities and launch sites in hopes of both stopping production and seizing the V-2 technology to learn how they made the rockets. They were successful in their mission and ended up capturing over 100 V-2 team members. Many of them, including Von Braun, were among the 1,600 German scientists, engineers, and technicians who the U.S. government secretly moved to the U.S. They soon began working for the American government as part of a project codenamed Operation Paperclip. After the war, the Soviets took control of the V-2 manufacturing sites. Eventually, they moved production to the Soviet Union. According to Interesting Engineering, the first five stage engines that Von Braun designed for the rocket are the most powerful single-chamber liquid-fueled rocket engines ever made. Number 2. The Bazooka The Bazooka is a portable, recoilless, anti-tank rocket launcher weapon. Nicknamed the Stovepipe, it became a crucial component of World War II infantry combat. It was even lauded by then-President Dwight D. Eisenhower as one key that helped secure an ally victory. Starting in 1942, troops relied heavily on bazookas to blast through enemy armor, often targeting the weak points of a tank to disable the vehicle. The bazooka was lightweight, easy to use, and mass-produced. The military manufactured nearly half a million bazookas for the Allies throughout the war. It had a firing range of about 300 feet. At one point, the Nazis captured some bazookas in North Africa and developed their own version of the weapon based on its design. The Japanese reverse-engineered yet another version of the bazooka, and these different variations became available to all fighting powers by the end of the war. The U.S. military continued to use different variants of American-designed bazookas in the post-war period, including during the Korean and Vietnam Wars. Other militaries have also employed the weapons, including the Portuguese Armed Forces, the British Army, and the Argentine Army. And number one, the K-Bar Knife. Shortly after the U.S. entered World War II, Army soldiers and Marines began complaining about the substandard World War I-era trench knives that the military had issued them. The weapon's grip was inefficient for hand-to-hand -hand combat, and its blade was thin and prone to break even during ordinary tasks. In 1942, the Marine Corps authorized the development of a better knife that was more suited to the needs of soldiers who were fighting in the war. The K-Bar Knife Company submitted a design for the improved fighting and utility knife and won the contract. It was sturdy, easy to manufacture, and practical to use among all U.S. military branches. Famous for its versatility, Soldiers used the K-Bar knife to open ammunition crates, cut through obstacles, and more. It remained popular even after the war. Other military forces unofficially used it in several ensuing conflicts, including the Korea, Vietnam, Desert Storm, and the Iraq War. And civilians also favor the knife. Which of these weapons, other than the atomic bomb, do you think was the most terrifying? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you next time.